God always be on your mind, ever on your lips and in your heart. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. You, Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our attention, as our attention shifts from Cairo and Egypt and goes to the lousy ball or super ball, whatever you call it, and as we put all our money on the uh, blue Packers and the uh, other Pittsburgh Steelers, whatever they are, uh, there will be millions and billions of dollars uh, bet today. And they'll be uh, spending $3 million per 60 second of uh, a commercial. And everybody will be watching the game because that is their comfort zone. Even though billions will be uh, placed, and after a few drinks, after the game is over, uh, wives will be suffering uh, persecution uh, because of the loss of their husbands in a financial situation. They lost the bet. Uh, this is the biggest day of betting in the history. In the, the United States. It's also the biggest day of battered women in the United States. Yes, it's much easier to be in that comfort zone of watching and being concerned about the CBS man, or the Fox fellow, and the other journalists from CNN, all who are attacked, uh, harmed, and some hospitalized. So it's much easier just to forget about that and not worry about the a brotherhood of Muslims to take over Egypt and turn it into another Iran. It's easier just to think about a nice uh, comfort uh, Super Bowl. And I'll give you a dollar if you know what, what was the two years ago who won the game. You'll forget about it right away. Yes, that's our comfort zone. But today the Lord is challenging us to go into his comfort zone. A comfort zone where we'll end up saying we're called to afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. Jesus is inviting us to follow him. And he says it in a, such a wonderful phrase today. He says, you are called to be the salt of the earth and the light in the kingdom, the light in the darkness. That the measure of your love is love without measure. That's what he's challenging us to do. The measure of your love for others is a love without measure for others. And that God is asking us to make that your comfort zone. But in order to do that, you have to really comfort the afflicted and afflict, afflict the comfortable in two different ways. First, by being the salt of the earth. Secondly, by being the light in our world. Yes, why do you go to get salt? Somebody yelled at me this morning, put salt on the uh, sidewalk. That's not the salt we're talking about. The salt we're talking about is the salt on your table, the salt on your uh, on, the, on your meat or uh, on your t a dinner table this afternoon. Yes, why do we have salt? For three reasons. First, to season your salt, uh, season your food, to bring better taste, to make it enhance the taste. Secondly, to purify it, and then thirdly, to preserve your food. To enhance it, purify it, and then preserve it. And God is calling us to be the salt of the earth. So how are we going to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable, and enhance a big person's life. But God is calling us to realize we live in a world of negativity, unemployment, uh, world of a situation that's volatile, divorces all over the place. Uh, we have drugs in, uh, in every high school. Uh, we have uh, addiction in every single uh, way. The one, the rising addiction I found, and I hear in confessions, and you know, all, not in confessions, I mean outside of confessions, and, some, and people don't go to confession, so they don't confess the pornography that they're watching, looking at. Yes, we live in that world, and we're called to be, uh, bring up 
increase the taste. Well, she's got good taste. He's got good taste. That's what God is asking you and me for, to become one who through seasons enhances and increases the life of people who are living in this life of darkness, in this life of sinfulness and mediocrity. Yes, when we look at the poor people who lost their jobs, their marriages, we ask ourselves to add life, add to their life, sustain their life, and enhance their life by caring about them. You know, when you think about one word of kindness can warm three winter months. One word of kindness can uh, warm three winter months. God is calling us to lift people up, increase their taste, enhance their taste by caring for them in a very concrete way. Yes, God asks us to get out of our comfort zone so that we can sincerely care for others who have so many, who are snowed in with so many problems, not just the problems of their roof, not only the problems on their sidewalk, but the, problem, the inner problems that they're going through. Yes, God is calling us in a very simple way. Yes, if we're going to season, enhance, and increase the taste, we have to be respond to who we are. Today, children tell the parents what they do. Children tell the parents what they do. Because the parents need their, their love so much, they run the house. My <coughs> grandmother told me this afternoon, they're spending $350 on a birthday for their ch a grandchild. $350. Pat, you probably got a piece of cake for your birthday. $350. Yes, children are not telling parents what to do. And God is calling us, if we really care about them, if we really care about our children, we show them tough love. Comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. If they feel entitled to $350 a birthday now, what are they going to feel entitled to when they're teenagers? And what are they going to feel entitled to when they get old? Our biggest sin in the United States today is entitlement, but it starts at four and three years old. Yes, God is calling us to show kindness in His way, and sometimes it's a tough love. The second way to be the salt of the earth is to purify, preserve, purify, and cleanse. And God is calling us in a very con concrete in our own way. Someone said, he who lives in glass houses should not throw stones. Come, it comes back to haunt you. You know, I cannot take back what I, comes out of my mouth. Whatever I say, I can't put it back into my mouth. And God calls us to cleanse that mouth of ours. For to cleanse ourselves of our sins. A couple of days ago, I went to confession. And why do I go to confession? To motivate myself to want to be better as a person, as any, as a human being. Not as a priest, but as a person. Yes, we need to cleanse, to be, in order to be cleanse other people, we need to be cleansed ourselves. Because all of us are imprisoned by some sin or other. And only by cleansing ourselves can we really be that salt of the earth in people's lives. Yes, God is calling you not only to sustain, to season, purify, but also to preserve that full dust. God wants you to be a salt shaker. A salt shaker, you shake it for many purposes, to get that salt out. God wants you to be the sh sh salt shaker, to take out the afflicted, uh, the comfortable, and comfort the afflicted. They may be in your family, they may be at work, they may be in high school, they may be in grammar school, wherever you are. You're called to be that salt of the earth so that you can end up preserving, preserving the goodness in us. Jesus died to save us and he, in order to keep, give us uh, eternal life and save us from eternal corruption. And we know the corruption in the world today. And to the degree that you identify with Christ's life, to indeed you identify with Christ uh, the cross, to that degree you're going to find peace, you're going to find happiness, because you are preserving the presence of God in you. And you have to carry that cross that you have so that you can preserve God's goodness, God's love, God's kindness. Yes, so God wants you to be the salt of the earth. He wants you to really season, purify, and maintain his presence in your life by the way you live. But the other invitation is to be the light of the world. Today, where we're all engulfed with violence, 
or involved in casual sex, involved, involved in a materialist, $3 million for a, a commercial. What you can do with $3 million for kids who don't have food, who don't have an education, kids who have to, teachers who have to uh, bring in papers to school here because there aren't pencils or not money, or there's no money for books or papers and pencils. Three million dollars for one commercial. Yes, God has called us to be the light of the world in this materialistic world. Yes, God is calling you to be a light of kindness, a light of compassion, a light of love, a light of faith, a, 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 light, a light of hope in this world that is so depressed because of the situation that so many people are in. Yes, God has given you an invitation. He wants you to be his salt shaker. He wants you to be the salt of the earth. He wants you to be the light of the world. Yes, he's looking to you and saying, please season the people in your life. Purify your own self so that you can sustain your love for God and give it to others. And respond to my call to be that light in your world. Because unless you're that light, the world, your world is in darkness of self-centeredness and of selfishness. But if you're in that world with your light, then you open up a desire to be love God, but God needs you to be his soul shaker. Lord, Father, you are asking a lot from me to be the salt of the earth and a salt, salt shaker at the same time. To be the light of the world in which I live. Do I really want to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable? Would I rather watch the Super Bowl game and just be lost in that comfort zone? Then watch for opportunities to be your salt shaker. Lord, help me out of my own comfort zone that really is making me uncomfortable. Give me the, uh, the comfort to know, believe, and live my life as the salt of the earth, the light of the world, as your salt shaker. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.